Tom is going to devise a couple of situations that we have. All right, so yeah, we have a rectangle, um, looks like in this case, and we have, looks like what they did is they draw two intersecting lines, but they show us a box, right? So that means we now we know we have a right angle. And if we have a right angle, we have a right triangle. When we have a right triangle, we know that we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to help us find a missing side. Because right now, ladies and gentlemen, do I have a triangle right here? If you forget about the rest of this box, is this a triangle? Yeah, and what I like to do, ladies and gentlemen, is forget about the figure and take this out. Redraw it. 9, 12, box, x. And if it's still confusing for you, Jake, you can spin it a little bit so it makes maybe more sense. Right? All I did is if I just like turn it like that, now my triangle looks something like this. Now it's maybe a little bit easier for you guys to see what is it we have. So remember when looking at this, um, when I look at my right angle, I know that across from it is my hypotenuse. Yes? Now my hypotenuse doesn't have that A, B, or C. It's labeled with an X. But an X is a variable, right? What we don't, uh, what we don't have a measurement for. Just like we didn't have a measurement for our C. So I know that here is a leg, here is a leg, and you remember our Pythagorean theorem said if we take our two legs, we square them, and we take the sum of them, they're going to equal our hypotenuse. So we say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. They're going to equal our hypotenuse squared. Well, in this case, you could say I'll call this a and this b. Those are going to be our two legs. Question? No. OK. So a squared, so it's going to be 9 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. Well, 9 squared is going to be 81 plus 12 squared, which is 144, equals c squared. Okay. Then 81. Huh? Yes. Well, no. You know, well, see, what happens is 225 equals c squared. Let me give you an example. If I have x minus 4 equals 10, if I want to solve for x, what would I do to solve for x? Well, our, our 4 is already being subtracted from the x. So I've got to add 4, right? So if I have x squared equals 16, and I need to get x by itself, what do I need to do to get x by itself? What? Well, x is already being squared. You're close. What's the inverse of squaring? Oh. Divide by itself. No, no. Uh, yeah, divide by itself. What do we call what, though? What do we, yes? How did you get 16? This is just a random, num random example. These have nothing to do with this problem. No, this, that's a different problem. Oh. X squared equals 16. What does X squared mean? What, when I say you square something, what are you doing? Yes. X squared equals X times X. Right? So if I'm saying you're multiplying something by itself, to undo that, you need to divide, divide it by itself, which we call what? The square roots. So you take the square root of both sides. OK? So ladies and gentlemen, you look at this. I have C squared equals 225. So therefore, to solve for C, I have to do what? Square root both sides. So C is going to equal 15. Okay.